Shell Zanna. I'm a music journalist based in Manchester in the UK. I'm obsessed with new music. I share lots of it on radio every week on Amazing Radio. Uh, I work for BBC Introducing and I'm also on XS Manchester, a local radio station in Greater Manchester. Right, I've got an interview with the lovely Hannah Ashcroft. Honestly, I was so blown away by this track that I made it the theme song, the intro and the outro on this whole channel. So that is how much I love her. She is so talented. Before that though, loads of good stuff happening at the moment in the world of music. If you haven't checked out the collaboration between the Streets and Tame Impala, then you need it in your life, frankly. Uh, Home Counties are a great new band I've been checking out from Bristol. If you love kind of squid and music like that, a little bit alt, a little bit post-punk, a little bit edgy, I like it a lot. Check it out, it's really good. Uh, there is a great urban scene in Leeds at the moment uh, featuring a dialect, Maya Craig, and also the legendary Graft. Five years ago I was top 10, this year I'm top three. Only person that tops me is my lady when she wants to slot me. That means I get three or two. That means I get... Dropped a new tune in the last week or so. He's wearing a fur coat in the video as well. He is a MOBO award winning musician. Check out Graft uh, and his new track, which is called T.O.P. Or Top. Right, it is time though to get to know Hannah Rashcroft. If you are a fan of radio stations like KEXP and Triple J, then and Six Music in the UK as well, you're going to really love what Hannah is doing. She's written with the likes of Beth Orton um, as part of the Brightest Sounds project, Both Sides Now. And she's also just so talented working with so many fantastic musicians in her own right. She is a singer songwriter based right here in Greater Manchester. She's a graduate of classical literature literature and a self-taught guitarist. I mean, big respect for that. She's got a really distinctive brand of uh, self-produced music. It was originally kind of indie folk with the likes of John Martin and St. Vincent in influence, but now she's really like, just, she's just literally grown so much. This new tune I'm obsessed with, it's called Under the Static. Gonna play you a little clip of it and then we'll get to see and chat to Hannah, who's currently also in self-isolation right now so yeah enjoy and remember all the details are below and uh, for me and for Hannah so make sure you subscribe and I'll see you back here for the next episode bye So I am joined today in a very strange setup because we're both on Zoom waving kind of at each other. I'm with the lovely Hannah Ashcroft because we're all in isolation. We're in <laughs> lockdown. How are, you, how are you surviving? How are you doing? I'm doing okay. I'm drinking a lot of tea. Um, that sounds very healthy. Yeah. Listening to a lot of radio, which is nice. Actually. Yeah, it's times like this that radio really does come to the fore. And I have to say that, you know, people that are listening to new music, I have a lot of respect for because at times like this, you kind of want reassurance and to go back to some of your old faves. So yeah. those that are hardcore listening and still want new music <laughs> just got every blessing from me. They really have. So what have you been listening to? Um, what have you been taking uh, comfort from? I've been listening to Amazing Radio. Um, I had a little dance around my kitchen to Craig Charles's Vincent and Soul show yesterday. Just like Amazing Radio, Six Music, that kind of thing. And um, just getting to hear people that I wouldn't usually listen to. So I'd be in work or doing something. I mean, a lot of musicians, they like to hear other musicians, but they maybe don't want to listen to too much new music in case they, it kind of, I don't know, they absorb some of it into the, their kind of psyche when they're making their own. Do you feel like that? Or are you okay with listening to, to other, other people's stuff? Um, I feel like the opposite. So I don't want to listen to stuff that I know really well or learn to play stuff that I know really well, just in case I accidentally nick something. But if I put something like new on, I can just, um, something will pop up into my head that I haven't thought of before or like a different way to phrase something or yeah, it's just more interesting with something new. Do you feel like with, you know, modern production methods and things like that, that if you do keep up to date with, you know, what other people are doing, it gives you more ideas for what kind of technology you could do things with or what kind of people you could work with maybe? Yeah, definitely. Um, 
I'm not very good at the whole home home recording thing, so I'm going to try and spend um, a bit of time getting better at that. I have to say, I can see in the background, there is a keyboard to your left shoulder and there is a, a couple of guitars, I think, to your right hand side. So you've obviously yeah. got some instruments at home, which is a bit of a relief, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah, I've got, um, got a little music room, so it's, it's been nice. It's not set up properly yet, but I'll get there. Is that the plan to kind of, you know, be able to do some more recording and get a few bits down, use the time constructively? Yeah, definitely. I think so. At the moment, it's kind of like, I think there's um, a kind of sweet spot in having like free time and being busy where you can sort of be creative. But at the moment, it just feels like too much time and you're just like, oh, I'll do it tomorrow. And um, <laughs> like eight days later and you've still not done it. It feels like this weird holiday. Is it just <laughs> me that thinks that, that like next week we're going to be going back to work? Yeah, and that, especially with the sun being out, it just feels yeah, like you know, school, summer holidays. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, I've got like a list of stuff to do, and I'm like, yeah, I'll do that later. Do it later, <laughs> and like just go and sit in the sun for a bit. So I have to say, your latest tune absolutely blew me away. Um, oh, just gorgeous, gorgeous track. So tell us about Under the Static. Here on the blind side. Um, so I recorded it with um, Sam Quinn, he plays in the travelling band and also um, Adam Dawson who drums for BC Camplight and we recorded it at the, the travelling band studio in Hull Sound actually, which is um, a really great little space. It's, um, it's a song about social anxiety. Um, <laughs> resonating with it well right now <laughs> um yeah not very good at talking to people so it's kind of um a few years of, of build up of that kind of a bit of a release from that I mean I I'm a quite an extroverted person but I do suffer from social anxiety but are you a bit more introverted on the spectrum would you say um yeah definitely uh well, my my best friend is um very extroverted and everyone's always commenting on just like how different we are and it's a bit annoying really because they always tell me I'm too quiet and then they tell her that she's too loud and then it's just like <clears throat> yeah it's a bit strange. Do you think that's something that women tend to get more than men you know you're always not ticking the right box? I've never really thought about it actually like that but I guess so yeah um I don't know I'm, I'm told quite a lot that I'm too too quiet I think it's more of a challenge if you're like introverted because you've obviously got some, you know, very important things to say and your music is so beautiful. It shows there is clearly a lot going on in there. And it's like, you know, it's nice to, to find out about it in a, in a nice, gentle way, if that makes sense. Um, I read a really nice interview with, I think it's David Byrne, or it might have been from his book, actually. I just got a book out and it says everyone was really shocked and um that he got on stage when he was so shy and and just did his thing um and he was just like well how else am i gonna gonna do it kind of thing. do you um, feel like you kind of come alive when you do a live performance yeah i'm getting better at that i've got to the point where i don't get nervous before but my legs start shaking uncontrollably um during oh. which is new um but i'm definitely getting better how does it feel when you've got a good crowd in and they're really appreciative of your music? It's amazing. I think the best one that I had was probably I was busking in um, in Germany. It just this like crowd appeared and everyone was so nice and they bought loads of CDs and there was little kids sort of like dancing in front of me. So that was that was amazing. So how did you first get into music? So I used to work at a bar in Liverpool while I was at uni and my manager started out running this open mic night. And no singers turned up. It was just like this blues band playing for hours. And he just kind of pushed me into doing a song. And then after that, he sort of made me do it every week. So that was it? That was it. <laughs> was it the kind of um, the experience that you then got a kind of hunger for? Yeah. Yeah, I, I kind of liked performing as a kid. And then, um, I don't know, I don't know what happened. I just kind of lost my confidence a bit. Um, but yeah, um, so my manager is in a band, quite a well-known Liverpool band called Xander and the Peace Pirates. So yeah, he just kind of started making me do it. 
um, which was which was good. <laughs> Scary, but good. <laughs> <laughs> big ups <laughs> I mean you've got some really good you know friends and kind of comrades in Manchester uh, on the musical side of things I know uh, that you play and support a lot um, the likes of Lind uh, Lindsay Monroe and you've, you've talked about Adam from BC Camp Light as well I mean do you find the Manchester scene really supportive? Yeah definitely <laughs> yeah Just everyone's really nice are, are there any spaces or places that you find super helpful and supportive i know there's some really good open mic nights and stuff in manchester as well yeah there's um the whiskey jar which i guess is a bit of a of a manchester classic my friend johnny from south island sun runs a nice night at the dulcimer as well which is just very welcoming yeah there's, and there's the, we've got um brighter sound as well um which is just an amazing sort of network for musicians. What kind of experiences have you had with Brighter Sound so far? Because they do so many great programmes, don't they? Yeah, they do. The first one I did, I think, was the, the Manchester Hill Remembered a couple of years ago. That was like a week residency writing for like a, a historical sort of memorial concert. And then there was the, the Beth Orton residency last year. Yeah, how was that? Um, yeah, it was, it was, it was an all-female residency is probably one of the the best thing I've ever done um it was just so nice to be in an environment where everyone's female and I've never felt like that competent or confident before so it was, it was special and how was working with Beth I mean blimey yeah it was great yeah she she's she's really great and she's really supportive um but she'll she'll let you know if she doesn't like something Really? Um, which I quite enjoyed because really, I've always kind of self-produced. I've never really had anyone sort of in that role. So I was, it, was, it was quite a nice thing to do. Yeah, well, you learn, live and learn from the experience. <laughs> what have you taken away from it that has, uh, has helped your own music? It just gave me, I don't know, a bit more confidence in myself, I guess. Um, everyone on the residency was really talented, really supportive. There was no sort of competitive element about it. It was just which is great and obviously you're in kind of lockdown situation at the moment I know you did a, a streaming gig the other day how was that is it a real challenge to make it work from your house I mean I guess it's easy you just turn on your camera but um, it's a bit of a it's a bit of a weird thing to do. um yeah trying to read comments as well um I had friends saying stuff I was trying not to laugh while I was playing and um Yes, just, um, just, just odd. <laughs> I think we're all learning new skills, aren't we, that we didn't even <laughs> think we really needed to learn. But yeah. And I mean, what are you going to be using this time for? Are you planning anything for the rest of the year? Or are you just sucking it and seeing until we can get out of lockdown? I'm doing a lot of admin. Uh, but I do my tax return. <laughs> Good. It's a constructive use of time. Um, but yeah, hopefully just I'm trying to teach myself keys at the moment and just hopefully do some writing recording and demoing and just make some plans for when we're allowed out I guess. Well we did say just before we started chatting that this kind of lock-in situation might lead you to do some collaborations or things that you might not have done otherwise. Uh, who would you really like to kind of be collaborating with if we can make it work over the internet? <laughs> um, are we talking sort of anyone or uh, what would the dream well, be come on Hannah <laughs> maybe Tom York well, I, don't, I don't think that's I mean aiming high yeah I, yeah. I mean I'm impressed with you for that <laughs> <laughs> um, but there's um, a band well um, a songwriter who I met in Germany he's American he's from Ohio and he's in a band called Hello Emerson which they released an album, which is just probably one of my favourite albums. It's just incredible. So I'd, I'd quite like to do something with those guys. Sounds exciting. So we may hear some new key, some keys on a future release, maybe. Mm, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> and who would you say your like huge inspirations are? When I was a teenager, I was really into Guns N' Roses. No way! You would never have placed that. I mean, you should totally do a Guns N' Roses cover, like streaming um, online. Wouldn't that be amazing? We did. When I first started um, a sort of folk band, we started trying to do like, um, I was playing mandolin 
we started trying to do like um, a folk cover of Mr. Brownstone, which um, never did see the light of day. Maybe but this then... is a time for experimentation. <laughs> well, I'm not sure. <laughs> um, then I guess um, I found a copy of Solid Air by John Martin in like a bargain bin in HMV when I was sort of in my late teens and that really sort of changed my music tastes a lot and um, went a lot more folky sort of after that. Anyone really, I'm, in, I'm into all sorts now. I love that moment of inspiration when it strikes though, when you hear something that resonates so powerfully for you that it changes your absolute outlook on how you make music. Yeah. John Martin, a very special musician, definitely. And it makes me really sad that it was like in a three pound bargain bin, which is like luckily how I came across it, but it's just. Um, I like yeah. to think it's not about the money, it's about kismet, it was meant to be. Yeah. And you know, it made the, made the <laughs> journey different for you and inspired you to be the artist you are today, which is, very, we're very thankful for. <laughs> So hopefully we'll be hearing some new music for, from you before the end of the year. Um, you said you might be working on a few tracks for an EP maybe? Yeah, fingers crossed. I've, so I've just released two of them. I was hoping to sort of get in the studio and, and finish them off over the next month or so. But it might be a, a little later on. Are you in touch with the guys from Pinhole? <laughs> um, not, not recently, but I, I believe Adam's still in there mixing so um <laughs> is he still literally going to work there i, I don't think, I think he lives so. there is he? no but i don't think he leaves yeah it, it, i suppose if he's on his own it's easier to isolate isn't it but yeah, yeah. can still do the mixing otherwise <laughs> he'd go slightly insane i think maybe yeah. but what a what a bunch of great guys they are I've still not yeah. been to pinhole but is it a beautiful space it is it's um feels like home i think which is like my what a studio should feel like that sounds perfect. Absolutely perfect. Well, Hannah, thank you so much for catching up with me today. Um, and thank you for the gorgeous music. Uh, keep inspiring us with everything that you're doing because it does touch people's hearts. Believe me, it does. <laughs> <laughs>